look at this process uh, in more detail. And we can, I want to introduce you to the major players in making proteins. Um, again, we call that proteins are made of amino acids. And what, of course, our star player is the DNA, uh, but that's obvious. And then we have our mRNA message, so our single strand message. We have another kind of RNA, actually called tRNA or transfer RNA. Transfer RNA, the job of that is to actually bring the correct amino acid. Um, so at the top of this tRNA, we're going to see an attachment site for an amino acid. And then on the bottom of the tRNA, there's what we call the anticodon. And you think about that the mRNA is called, cold, the triplet bases are called codons. Well, the bottom of the tRNA are called anticodons, so that should give a good message to you that the tRNA and the mRNA are going to be complementary to each other, right? So if there's an A on mRNA, then there better be a U on the tRNA. Um, and then, of course, we need something that's going to actually create the protein, and those are our ribosomes. So ribosomes are organelles in our cells that are actually going to read the message, uh, take the amino acids, and attach them together. So we look at this image here, sort of see a, sort of a snapshot of the process. You see that the mRNA here fits in between two subunits of the ribosome. So think of it as like a piece of bacon uh, fitting in the bun, in the top and the bottom bun. So think of the ribosome as the sort of the bun, um, and then this strip of mRNA as the bacon that goes in between. And so our mRNA is fitting in between uh, our ribosome, and the ribosome is moving, uh, moving, sort of reading the mRNA, and it's going by three letters at a time. So it's reading uh, the codons. And then when it stops on the codon, and what, what happens is that only one tRNA is going to be able to go into the ribosome and attach to that mRNA. Only the complementary tRNA is going to fit there. And that complementary tRNA is going to bring only one particular amino acid. So if we have an mRNA with AAA, well, the only the, the tRNA that has a UUU is going to be able to attach there. And UUU is all, tRNA is always going to bring one particular amino acid. So this is how we can control which amino acids are getting attached uh, to the protein um, by the message in the mRNA, the sequence, which only codes to only is complementary to one particular tRNA, which is only bringing one particular amino acid. So let's see if we can deduce the steps in making the protein. I'll show you an image and want you to sort of just try to identify what's going here, going on there, and write it down and you know pause and unpause when you are ready to look at the steps. So let's look at step one. What do you think is happening here? So we see a few things happening here in step one. We see our DNA, our double strand DNA. We see a protein, this is a little yellow pause uh, protein, and then we see our mRNA. So what's happening here is that this yellow protein is opening the DNA, so opening the, separating the strands, and what it's doing, it's reading the coding strand of the DNA, and what it's doing, it's creating the mRNA sequence that's complementary or opposite or base pairs with that DNA sequence. So we look at the DNA, if the first letter base in the DNA, in the gene, is T in the DNA, well then in the first letter in mRNA is going to be A. And if the next letter is a G in DNA, then it's going to be a C. So this protein is unwinding the DNA, reading the colon strand, and creating the mRNA sequence based on, on the DNA coding strand. And this is, of course, happening in a nucleus. Let's go on to step two. So what's happening in this image? Pause, unpause when you're ready. So in step two, we see that the mRNA is actually leaving, or leaving the nucleus and it's going into the cytoplasm. Let's go on to step three. Pause and unpause when you're ready to proceed. 
So here we see it's a little bit complicated. We see our ribosome with two units, subunits, uh, and we see our mRNA wedged in between the two subunits of the ribosome. And we see at the bottom here of the mRNA, we see a particular uh, sequence. So we have three codons here on nine bases. And we see with AUG that there's going to be a tRNA that's complementary to that, that's bringing a particular amino acid. And what you see is that there's actually space for two of these tRNAs. And so now we have two amino acids and we're waiting for the ribosome to read, to move over, shift over to read that AAA codon to allow the UUU tRNA to bring its amino acid. Let's go into step four. Now we see that the ribosome has shifted over to that AAA the codon, and that allowed the UUU tRNA to enter. Also notice that the, the first tRNA has exited the ribosome. And notice what's really important here is that the first two amino acids have been attached to each other. So the ribosome is actually creating that bond between those amino acids. So what's the next step? Well, we can see in step five that our ribosome has shifted over, over quite a few uh, codons. And of course, the previous tRNAs have have left the ribosome and we see that these amino acids have been attached to each other. And so this process, of course, is going to continue until the ribosome reaches a stop codon, for example, like UGA, and there's no more tRNAs that's going to enter, no more amino acids to be attached. We'll let go of the protein, we have a finished protein, and then the cell can further process that protein, can do its job and make our traits. So let's do a quick recap. We start off with DNA and we make a message, an mRNA me message. That process is called transcription. Now we're gonna take that mRNA message and we're going, of course, it's gonna leave the nucleus and then the ribosome is gonna read that mRNA message to create the protein. That second part of the process is called translation. 